Hello everyone and welcome to Linux Quest. Rob here. Well, I've had about five days with chaos now and I must say I've been surprised in a lot of ways. Uh, surprised in a nice way, I guess I'll put it. Um, it's been really flawless, very smooth, very snappy, even with some of the transitions and things in place. You'll notice here I kept everything stock and I did that on purpose. Didn't even change the wallpaper, which is something that's tough for me to to do from time to time. I appreciate this wallpaper. It's just, uh, it's clean. The thing that was the hardest for me to keep in place is the panel on the right. This is just completely opposite from, from any other way that I typically set up my desktop. But I wanted to keep it this way just to see if it was something that I would get used to. And in fact, my muscle memory is in place here for going to the application launcher up top here. Um, from time to time, I'd find myself going here uh, as far as where things are located in the panel, again, left some things here that were just set up by default. So this Sticky Notes app here was set up, and I must say it feels at home here. And this is not typically something you'll see set up within a distro. It's easy enough to do to, to pin the app here and activate it. Um, but, um, you know, I found that I've actually used this from time to time. I just put up a sample note here. If you go into settings, you'll see options for colors and things like that. Uh, calculator was pinned here. Not sure why. That's typically, again, not something that you'll see pinned to the panel by default. And then moving on down, uh, we've got your desktop switcher here. I left that in place, although I don't use multiple desktops. And then Dolphin was pinned here, so you could launch right into the Dolphin file manager. And I want to go ahead and just speak to this they've got this set up different than I've ever seen Dolphin set up. Um, you know, of course, the icons are different here. There are a lot of differences when you go through the system and look at how well the, um, the icons match everything in the system. Uh, I haven't found an area where any of the icons are out of place or anything like that. So the developers have done a phenomenal job there with making sure that it all works together, looks like it should you know, from icon to icon and from app to app. Now, I say all of that, and then you get down here to the trash icon, and it just, to me, it looks like it stands out a little bit, um, but that's just very, very nitpicky. But also, you'll see that places is now on the right as opposed to where you'll normally see it here on the left. And then on the left, they have set up a panel that will uh, give you a list of options and things like that, and oftentimes, change your views, um, but oftentimes you will see that up top. So even Dolphin really has a, a completely different feel to it. So uh, go ahead and mention that. Uh, next up, another difference you'll see here is the default web browser, and that's going to be Falcon. And actually, uh, I have, well, let's see here, my own video. Well, look at that. Uh, who would have thought that a Linux Quest video would have popped up here just randomly? <laughs> anyway, so if you missed my Chaos 2018-06 Things to Know video, uh, basically that's a video where I'm going in and talking about the uh, idea behind Chaos, uh, what the developers had in mind for this and that kind of thing. So just we'll throw that out to you with a selfless plug. Um, but actually just wanted to talk about, uh, you see here, uh, Adblock is active. This was set up by default. I did not set up Adblock. But I want to talk about Falcon for a minute. It's It's been actually a good experience as far as a web browser goes. You know, tab management and things like that has been great. Um, no issues there. And uh, it seems to be fairly fast. Um, so really, I've been kind of impressed with it. What version this is. Uh, this is 3.0.1 with a Qt web engine version of 5.11. And let's move on down here. You've got uh, Octopi here. This is your notifier for any system updates. And I'm not a huge fan of Octopi. I mean, it'll work. It'll uh, allow you to search for software and um, you know, apps in general, uh, check for updates and that kind of thing. And that'll, if you've got an update, it'll show up here. This will turn red. And by the way, I've had two what I'd call 
you know, small to medium sized updates. And let me go ahead and jump over and we'll take a look at the current version. Uh, let's go to System Info Center. Again, you'll see here where all of the icons in place, it just, it's, uh, it's throughout the system as it should be. So what we have here with Chaos 2018, and this was released again in June, two updates that I've had. You're now at KDE Plasma version 5.13.4 with a framework of 5.49 and a QT version of 5.11.1 and a you know, fairly recent kernel of 4.16.14. Fairly up to date as far as anything KDE is concerned. And that's the core focus here. Uh, if you're new to Chaos, the core focus, a little bit of recap, the core focus is KDE as far as the desktop, Plasma, and um, bounce back over to Octopi. And one thing I want to talk about is software. So the focus here with this repository, and because this is an independent distro, you're not tapping into the, let's say, Ubuntu repository, and it's not like Arch where you have, you know, a myriad of software I mean where you know within Arch if you open up the AUR you've got access to everything and sometimes a um, multiple version of everything you're not really going to find that here uh, but you're also not going to find apps like Steam um, or for that matter let's just do a quick search here uh, no VLC is there okay earlier and did not see VLC you can find Chrome so if you're someone who you know has to have Google Chrome, you'll find that there. Um, I would urge you to give Falcon a try. I, I just think it's a it's a very capable browser and it's uh, fast and fluid and everything I think you would look for in a browser. Now I don't think any of the extensions and things like that are going to be there. Uh, let's see here. Let me double check Steam. So no Steam. Um, you know, you're not going to find a lot of uh, GTK focused apps, for example. You're not going to find um, 30 different video apps and things like that. They want to keep the apps focused, well tested, so that everything you're using within the OS looks like it belongs. And I think they've achieved that for the most part. Down here are your applets. Uh, so we'll continue on. You've got your Wi Fi clipboard, things like that, notifications. As far as an overall operating system is concerned, it's perfectly capable. If you can find the applications that you need and uh, put in place the things that you want to do what you need to do, um, I see no reason why this wouldn't be a perfectly good operating system for you. Now you have to like KDE, so that's got to be your, your deal, and that's not going to change. And I highly doubt you're going to find a version of Chaos with the GNOME desktop or anything like that. I believe they are fully vested in what they're doing here and with their core focus. Now it's been fast and snappy, and I'll give you a little, um, just a quick rundown. So I actually had this loaded on a different system with a pretty weak processor, AMD processor. Um, I found uh, a laptop that, um, that I haven't used in a while that had some issues. I was working on that. Basically, I took the SSD drive out of the other system, which was an all-in-one, put it in this Core i3 laptop, which was supposed to have 8 gigs of RAM, but it's showing up 5.7 for some reason. Nevertheless, it's really running snappy, really pleased with it. This runs great on it. So if you have a system with similar specs, um, you would, I think, have a good experience as well. And again, I haven't turned off any of the default effects or anything that's in place here. In fact, I haven't even gone in. It's run so well. I haven't even gone in to see what uh, effects are in place. Let's go ahead and move over to desktop effects. Zoom is in play. Fade. Uh, let's see. Screen edge, sliding pop-ups, translucency. Um, so most of the, I think, default or what you'll see default wise. And again, I just want to point out how well all of the icons are right in place where they should be. Now let's launch into another app. And I expect that Kden Live is going to look good within a KDE Plasma desktop environment. And it does, it looks just like it should. 
I just wasn't sure if some of the icons and things that they had put in play were going to show up here, and they, they did not. To me, this just looks like, and I may be wrong. I mean, there could be subtle differences here that I'm just not noticing. But to, to me, this just looks like uh, default KD, or Kden Live uh, that you would launch in any other KDE desktop environment. So let's talk about the apps that are installed. You've got a few here in uh, development. You've got Kiragami, Compare, QT Assistant. Um, under education, you've got science, you've got KDE Marble and Marble. Show, you know, so showing off a little bit of um, you know, KDE apps. And this is a, if you've never seen this, this is a very well done app. Let's move on down here under games. You've got uh, K Patience, so again, in keeping with KDE. Under graphics, you've got Gwenview, Carbon, Krita, and Ocular. So let's see what else we got here. And K Ruler. So, you know, I can't think of a reason why you would put K Ruler in your distro other than to show off what um, some of the KDE apps look like. All right, how do I get rid of this, folks? Let's see here. Let's stretch that ruler right out. There we go. Let's see here. I've never actually opened or checked out KDE Ruler. So we'll go ahead and quit there. Jump back over here into Apps. And uh, we covered Graphics. Let's go to Internet. Here's Falcon. I am Contacts. KDE Connect. Wouldn't expect not to see that there. Um, KDE IM Log. KGET. Quassel IRC Client, C File, and Skype. Under Multimedia, Alyssa, K3B, Camoso, Caden Live, MPV, uh, QT V4 L2 Test Utility. Never seen that before. And I was surprised Simple Screen Recorder was already set up. In fact, I was just curious if I would even find Simple Screen Recorder. Uh, you know, within the repository, and I'm happy to report it was already set up. Also, SM Player and SM Tube. Under Office, you've got Calligra Sheets, Callig uh, Calligra Words, Carbon, and Ocular. So you're not seeing the typical LibreOffice, but it is available in the repos. So under System here, you'll see a couple of options here for Octopi, the Cache Cleaner, and the Notifier as well as a Pac-Man log all set up. You've also got KDE Partition Manager and ISO Writer. And I think this part, let's go ahead and, I think this was pulled in from OpenSUSE, or OpenSUSE, if you prefer. And, um, but again, it's implemented well here and it looks like it belongs, so. Uh, now, there's one other thing that I want to show you, and this to me is pretty standout. Croso. I'm probably not pronouncing the name correctly, but uh, this is what you'll see when you launch in. you got an option here to toggle this off. I love the way this is set up. So this is more than just information, um, you know, help files, links to the website and forum and things like that, which is all good. This has got your options here to go in and change, you know, the more common things that maybe you want to change. The widget style, for example. So a quick link right there. The plasma theme that's in place. So um, you see you've got several here to choose from. Some of the more standard breeze and things like that. Uh, and again, I haven't changed a thing. So... Midna is the default here, but bam, right to it. Window decoration, same thing. Launch right to it. Icon set, and actually, okay, Midna. So that's the icon set in play. I never even looked at it. I just, I've just been using it. It looks great. It's different, but it's, to me, different in a good way. And so I've just been using it. Uh, screen settings, mouse behavior. So that's things that you may need to adjust, those two things. So having that there makes sense. Um, if you wanted to set up a virtual desktop. I was even surprised to see a quick setting to your fonts and then the uh, colors as well. So for changing things up, it's all right there. And then you have tabs or categories, if you will, here. Uh, you could go right over to uh, wallpapers, choose various wallpapers, download those wallpapers. So if we go to popular... 
curated, things like that. Docs, and so here, uh, asking smart, Pac-Man, so you could launch right in and figure out what all of this stuff is. This gets into the additional kernels, so it's nice to have that information there. And we talked a little bit about that in the previous chaos video. And then we get into advanced, and this is, again, uh, links to anything that they would deem more advanced users would want to change or set up or check out you know firewall energy savings eh, I'd argue with that one a little bit about being advanced uh, system D uh, add users network management KDE wallet which by the way hasn't popped up and bothered me at all here in this system so that's been nice uh, configure your search the Pac-Man cache and then you could set up default apps and then down here you're going to get into the about so you'll have a nice large screen to read all about what's going on there and then any news quick link to that and then you could just quit from here very very well done there I'll sum it up like this uh, because I kinda went long on the you know previous video as an operating system recap if you can find what you want I see no reason why this couldn't be your daily driver it seems very smooth it seems polished it's different enough to kind of keep your attention. Uh, I don't, I'm not saying that I would stick with my panel over here on the right, but I applaud the efforts uh, that have gone into this distro. And over a five day period, I applaud how well it's run. No crashes, the updates have been flawless, and uh, the speed at which I've pulled down any uh, apps, and I've only maybe one or two, I haven't set up a tremendous amount because a lot of what I need is is already in place. You know, this is kind of like, and, and I think a couple of you who watched the previous video made mention of this, um, this is kind of like Solus in that Solus is an extremely good operating system and you've got options in desktop where this you're stuck, you know, you're stuck with, not in the bad way, but you're stuck with KDE Plasma. Nothing wrong with that at all. But uh, for the most part, the repos are somewhat limited in Solus, and you'll often find people say, man, I really liked Solus, but there was you know, that one app or whatever. Now, some of those issues are going away, and I suspect if you wanted to take the time here, you could build um, other apps that are not in the repos and, and get yourself set up. So if you're a KDE fan, as I said in the previous video, uh, definitely try this out. It's, it's uh, neat enough, cool enough, and different enough, I think, to deserve attention. All right, with that all said, hope you've enjoyed the video and this uh, fairly short review. Um, as always, I appreciate you watching, and we will check you later.